Hi folks, thank you very much for joining me. Before we do the Black Gibson, stay tuned at the end, we'll do the guitar lesson for the Roy Buchanan thing on this. And just on playback, this guitar is just, it sounds better than any of them. So this wins the battle. Um, that's true on so many levels actually, probably. But let's look at the Black Gibson first before I babble anymore. <laughs> Right, for anybody new to the channel then, this is my 2009 Gibson Les Paul 52 reissue from the custom shop, made in 2009, which was the year of Les Paul's death. Um, lots of information on this guitar, you can type in Paul Stafford Cook, Les Paul Gold Top and you'll get the full story on it. I love it. It's generally stock, except this Mojo Axe Trapeze and Bridge, because I broke the first one. Full story detailed elsewhere on my channel. I love this guitar, it's like an old glove. Everyone wore gloves. <laughs> this one, an older guitar from 1995, has its fair share of aging and tarnishing and now a couple of nicks from me on the bottom. Uh, I love this guitar and yet a nice one with nice white binding just would not do. I had to have an old tarnished looking thing and this fulfills every desire I have for a black Les Paul custom. As was the case in 1957, it's all mahogany, no maple cap. Um, again, the full story of this one is on my YouTube channel. Uh, lovely guitar, 10 pounds, bit of a weight. I don't mind weight, weight does not bother me in the slightest, whether a guitar is light or heavy, as long as it sounds good. And this one sounds like a grand piano. Let's get on with the Roy Buchanan lesson then. I don't profess to play like Roy Buchanan. When you listen back, he's way more raw and aggressive and just generally better than I am. But hear the sound of this Telecaster when I'm showing you some of the Roy-isms. You can see Telecaster was his guitar of choice and you can see why it was, it's got this raw, wiry, almost metallic sound. So it's made of metal in some, some parts. Let's go look at it. 
the swells then, starting off with zero volume on the guitar. Couldn't be easier, but it's hard on a Gibson style instrument. I struggled a bit with the, with the gold top with that. Much easier on a Telecaster and incredibly easy on a Stratocaster. Couple of things then. My finger, first finger you'll see, is just there in an attempt to block out any unwanted noise and mute unwanted strings. Second thing is you notice I'm not subjecting the notes to any vibrato, just because it, when you give a note vibrato, as beautiful as vibrato is, and it's part of your own signature sound, by not giving a note vibrato, you are you're making the note very vulnerable, very exposed, naked, very brave, very confident, and you have to be the rest of your song, your lead has to be so fucking good <laughs> that you can afford to not give the note any vibrato. So it's a very brave thing to do to say. Because every part of my body right now wants to vibrate. But it's like saying, just fucking wait for it. So now at this point, I'm either a really naff beginner guitar player or... You can then come in with vibrato to gel all together. And the fact that you didn't give it vibrato is so powerful. So obviously Roy does a lot of that. Then, kind of, I deliberately took quite a while to drag my finger down over the frets there. I wouldn't do that, but Roy does that a lot. He's not afraid to, he's a great slow slider, Roy Buchanan. slow stuff with his he's great at that so he's slow there as you go to the A7 and resolves to the 5 chord the D with a very sort of country in fact this whole song is peppered with almost country style bends where he's very exacting in the pitching of the note well, not like that, Paul. And then he refers to that. Some other little notes. And repeats. The next time he does it, he does it more aggressively with hammer-ons. Then... Again, very country style, very on off like a light switch, and very exact in pitch. Funny single coil guitars, either really buzz. It's very easy, just be, gotta be very confident with your attack. Couldn't be simpler, just I'm playing major scale to the E minor. But then he does some scrappy playing. <laughs> that was it's hard trying to copy a guitar player who's deliberately scrappy. So he's trying to copy Roy Buchanan and Rory Gallagher, two very scrappy players. It's hard because you think, what did you do there then? It just looks like a mess, but it's a great mess with a great tone, played very aggressively, surrounded by incredibly gorgeous, amazing stuff. So it's hard to copy the scrappy bits, but all I was doing was... Taking advantage of open notes. So you can play around that all day, but it's a way to get some speed in. Just the blues. And a slow slide back up. My flesh going over the, the frets. Just taking that G 
you going to that G? Very sort of country style again. All of that type of stuff. some more scrappy stuff. Play what you want. I don't know what he plays. He's too scrappy for me to follow him. So you just, he does all that. And sometimes he can go. He does all that kind of weird stuff. But anyway, he goes in. And I go. I'm down here, I can take advantage of open strings, and I'm playing it like a chicken. Just by muting. And then doing there is I'm imagining these shapes because we're now on the five chord D but as I imagine these shapes I'm walking up to them and it's this left hand on this occasion that's muting the sound bending higher than pitch and then a sort of a Jeff Beckism I would play this but no he's either fucked up which I don't think or he's deliberately playing things kind of weird so he starts off similar to me I'm doing is I've deliberately taken that part, the B string part almost up a fret too high and now I'm having to bend semitones to compensate and it all gets a bit weird so note for note I'm going like this. Now watch the shift, I've, I've shifted up a fret. It sounds like I'm playing slide. Yeah. Then he goes just plays it just gets kind of classed as cheating he's playing D blues scale over a D chord rather than playing blue uh, rather than playing the blues in G but referencing D notes he's playing the basic pentatonic scale in D which is usually classed as cheating but anyway he goes how many times have you done that if you think about for a minute you're playing D blues I bet that comes super easy. And then, of course, there's a lot of dragging again, just using my left hand to mute and only allowing my hand to make notes sound that I want to sound. So I'm just playing this. Bending the G string while grabbing and dropping to get that country sound. 
ultimately forming that chord from that chord. The whole country, then down here. Or wherever you want to get your tones. Then he switches pickups. Just turning that chord, putting that J on top. Just walking down that. And doing the same thing down there. She's gone from there, playing off that shape of G, to now playing off this shape of G. Then to reference the A chord, to get to the D chord, Anyway, I better stop that there or this video will be 10 hours long. I hope you got something out of that.